Hello everybody, Luke here once again, this time to jump through Google Maps and give you some tips that I find are very helpful in planning trips, travel, just in general and using Google Maps. Now, I will be jumping through a few that I find interesting. If you have some additional tips you wanna add, do me a big favor, leave them in the comments down below. Maybe they'll make it into a future video here as we try to help you get the most out of your Google Maps experience. First though, real quick, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. Hopefully we can help you learn something new. All right, let's start off with live traffic. Now you're probably very familiar with the fact that Google Maps will show you traffic, but did you know it can actually show you traffic in the future? To find this, what you gotta do is gotta go into the Google Maps setting here on the left and select traffic. That will open a new menu down here at the bottom and it by default is always on live traffic. Now I'm recording this at a time where it's not very busy. And you see Chicago is pretty light. But what if we wanted to find out what's the typical traffic, let's say around eight o'clock in the morning local time in Chicago? Well, that looks a lot different. We can go a little bit farther back, farther forward. We can see what rush hour will be like in the afternoon, 4.55 p.m. on a Monday, typical traffic right here. Now this can give you some great ideas here. For example, 94 to um, 94 looks fairly busy. Do I wanna jump up and take 90 into? Do I wanna go down to 30 down here and kinda of cut around all that? Kinda of gives you a good idea here. Or I gotta go into Chicago, maybe I wanna do that around, you know, 1.30, two o'clock, rather than let's say um, going in at six. Maybe I can wait and go in at eight and find a lot less traffic, for example. This is really cool. I find this very helpful in predicting future travel uh, when I'm going to go through areas where I'm not very familiar with it. And you can select the specific day. For instance, Fridays, traffic often leaves a little bit earlier on their way home. More people are rushing out. So check that out. But let's say we're planning a point to point travel. In this case, going from Oklahoma City to Temple, Texas. Now, by default, whenever you do this, it's set to leave now. It will show you the time of if I left right now, but I'm not going to, right? I'm planning this trip for tomorrow morning, let's say, and I intend to leave the hotel at, oh, let's say, I wanna leave at seven or um, o'clock in the morning here, so let's do that. And then right here we go. And it will say typically, if I leave at seven o'clock, I'll get there around 12, um, 10 p.m. And it takes four, let's just say four and a half to roughly five hours to do the trip. But what happens if I don't care when I leave, but I know I absolutely need to leave um, in time to be at my destination by 1.30. And this is really cool. And it will actually let you say, hey, through these routes, if you leave by 8.20, on average, you will hit your um, goal time to be there by 1.30 p.m. These are very helpful for me, especially when I was in real estate. I wish I had this tool to go show homes and be like, I need to make sure I'm there by one so I'm not late. So I recommend you really do take your time to get um, to use this. And it's kind of hidden a little bit, but not too much. There's just this little option here that says leave now. So check that out. It is, again, once you enter in your um, destination, your starting point, you can then go here and adjust that. All right, let's go take a look at a few other features here. Now, starting off with the options. We all have different ways we wanna do it, right? We Some people want to avoid highways, some people want to avoid toll roads, some people don't care. Google Maps now gives you the ability to do just that. You can go in here and you can say, hey, I don't wanna do highways. And it will reroute you. Now, there's a price to pay a little bit. Four and a half hours when you avoid highways suddenly it turns into six and a half. Takes an additional two hours. But for some people it's worth it. Now you can avoid tolls. And you see here, it added 20 minutes to my trip, but I'm saving money on the tolls. So check that out. You can play around with that a lot there. Also, Let's say, let's remove that. Let's say you're going on this trip and you wanna plan your rest out. I remember traveling with young kids. You gotta book in those um, bottle feedings and other things into it. Google Maps 
not that long ago, added very easy ways to sort, for example, rest stops. I can see right here, Oklahoma, um, travel stop and more. And the cool thing about this is it's showing only the ones on my route. It's not showing me ones on the other side of the highway. For instance, it doesn't show me the Texas Welcome Center, even though I know it's here, because I'm driving north in this example. And more, I can click on them and get some additional information about them. I can even go in the photos and check out, see, oh, is this somewhere where I wanna stop? It's a really cool feature that they've added in. And you can go in and find not just rest stops, but gas stations, hotels, and more. Um, all you gotta do for this is to, at the top, once you enter in your route, go in here and select hotels, gas stations, rest stops, and more. This is a great feature, I'm happy they added it. It's something I enjoyed from my days back with Microsoft um, Streets. Who remembers the software you used to install? But it would allow you to say, hey, every two hours I wanna make a stop. Where roughly will I be in two hours? This is a little bit easier because it actually shows you more places to actually stop in. All right, I wanted to show you some interesting things. These aren't necessarily tips that you can do, but a little bit of information about how Google Maps processes your route. Now, I'm doing this route from Temple, Texas up to uh, Joplin here. <laughs> now, with this route, it's actually taking me in what it says is the fastest, shortest route. But there's a catch here. Google Maps is not taking account red lights. Taking this two minute slower route through 35 up to Oklahoma City and then 44 over to Joplin has no red lights. I'm on a highway the entire way from start to finish, mostly. You know, you gotta get off to get to the actual hotel or from your home, wherever. Now, but on this one, from the time I exit Texas all the way up to I-44, about half of that trip will be through towns where the speed could be 35. It could, where you're gonna run into red lights and traffic. Google Maps really doesn't take that into account. So you really do need to take into account, hey, you know, yeah, this is two minutes faster, but going through Oklahoma City means I don't have to um, run the risk of hitting red light after red light after red light. How many times do you think you need to hit a red light um, when you're going a couple hundred miles to lose two minutes of saving? So keep that in mind here. All right, next up, picking alternate routes. Now you know right off the bat, you always get multiple options. Here we're going from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Flint, Michigan. You can see I got three different routes to pick from. And I got one that's an hour and a half, 2.15, 2.6. But what happens to say, hey, I really wanna make a stop in um, St. John's, for example. Did you know you can drag and drop these routes to do that and more? And you, depending on where you drag and drop, you can actually completely alter the route and how it works. So keep that in mind. It is very easy to say, well, you know, I don't wanna go that way. I wanna avoid this particular town because I know there's a major event happening that day and I wanna make sure I am not gonna get caught up in that. Uh, when I used to work at summer camp in Maine, there was always the week we would pick the kids up from the airport, a town that would do a parade. And the first few years I worked there, at least one or two of the buses from the airport would always hit that parade and be stuck because roads were closed and more. We ended up um, in future years deliberately planning our routes around that town. And that's maybe what you gotta do here. You just gotta know that there is a um, upcoming major event and sometimes you wanna route around it. And that's the great thing about Google Maps is you can drag and drop and alter your route however you want. All right, let's look at some information that you can pull from here. Now you've probably seen the store pages or whatever ones you want, but do you know that you can now order food through Google Maps? Yes, if you find a restaurant that you wanna to go to, it will now tell you what places to deliver. In this example, you got Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Seamless. I'm actually not familiar with Seamless. Anyone here use it? But it actually tells you where you can go to order food, or you can go to subway.com and order directly on their website. Burger King's actually partnering, and I'm assuming this is gonna become more popular, Starting this week from when I'm recording it, you will actually be able to order your food right in the Google Maps app and have your food ready for you at the Burger King you're ordering from. Now, this may seem silly. Hey, Luke, I can always open the Uber Eats app and more be ready. Where I find this helpful is when you're in an area where you're not familiar with it and I'm traveling. Then you go down the roads, get my co-pilot, my wife, your spouse, whoever it may be riding with you. 
to say, hey, I want to find, you know, there's a McDonald's and four exits. Click on it, place an order, and there you go. I can um, order through all these different places. A really cool feature to keep in mind and check out. But uh, as always, these may be inconsistent. So far, though, I've found that these um, ordering systems through it are very helpful. And I've used this a lot when I'm in traveling, as I've been doing a lot for work and personal, to say, hey, I'm tra- I'm out of town. I want to get some food. What's available in my area? I really want to go to this particular restaurant. Where can I get food from it? Rather than bouncing from Grubhub to Uber Eats to DoorDash to find the one that actually has the restaurant I want to go to. All right, let's take a look at Walmart. Now, a lot of super centers are increasingly changing their hours. Walmart and other companies have actually tied their hour availability into Google Maps. So you can not only get the main store hours, as you can see up here, but you can now get information about um, different places, the Walmart bakery, the Walmart garden section, the pharmacy, and more. This is a really cool way to make sure when you get there, what you want is actually going to be open. Walmart is not alone in this. Increasingly, major box stores are partnering with Walmart, with Google Maps and other places to make sure that in real time, their hours will be correct. So keep that in mind. Check that out as a source there. All right. Now, if you probably remember the old Point Inside app, which was an app that would show you like where things are inside an airport, a mall in many different places. Well, Google Maps isn't going to be outdone. They've, over the last few years, increasingly gone in here and added interior maps to popular places. Now you don't need another app. You just have Google Maps where you can go in here and say, hey, I'm at the Denver airport. I'm landing at B39. I need to go over to B24. Uh, What is available on the route? Not only do I get food options, the Chick-fil-A, the McDonald's, and more, um, you get other places to go and stop at to eat and more. For some reason, I, some of my longest layovers have always been in the Denver airport. <laughs> so I pulled that one up, but check it out. It's a really cool feature here. Can make time stuck in an airport a lot easier. How many times have you been in an airport and stopped and had some food only to go down a few more gates and say, wow, that was a much better restaurant right there. I wish I had eaten there. And that's the nice thing here. And of course you get all the typical stuff. Here's a wine bar. I can see the ratings and more to get an idea if it's worth my time. So check that out. Just search for a particular place. And this time I did Denver Airport. And then you just kind of zoom in. And the closer you get, the more detail you have. Right down to the gates and what's around them. And it even tells you stuff like Frontier Customer Service and more. All right. But airports aren't the only place this happens at. Increasingly, resorts and major parks and attractions are now available in Google Maps. I'm taking a look at Disney World. This is the Magic Kingdom, and you can see everything. You got the central hub here, you got the castle, you got the different rides, the different restaurants, and more. But Google Maps has even gone to the point where you can now get um, Street View inside major parks. Here we are at the Magic Kingdom. And I'm assuming from the looks at this, let's see here, this was recorded in 2016. So keep in mind that some of this is changes. Disney World's always changing. For instance, the castle got a new paint job recently. That's different. But this is a very helpful way to find where you're going. If you need to get to a particular ride, you've never been there before, you know, just drop in. Not only can you get an idea of, hey, what does this ride look like when I get there? You can even get walking directions using this. If you have a Pixel phone, you can use augmented reality to, as you walk in real time, get an idea where you're going and what's there. And lastly, don't forget the ability to actually send things to your phone. This is a really cool thing, because if you're like me, maybe on your phone or your tablet or whatever, you're looking up locations, but you want to send it to another device. You can do that now just by selecting send to your phone and we'll do it. It'll give you an option to pull up your phone, your tablet, and more. And you can even share this. This is a great way. I've shared this to text message, to email, wherever to say, hey, meet me here. Rather than giving an address, rather than doing all that, that they have to manually enter into their map app. 
send somebody a link to it on Google Maps and then they can just tap it and get directions to wherever they go. So keep that in mind. All right, there are my 10 quick tips on how to get around Google Maps like a pro. Hopefully these tips have helped you learn something new. If they have, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate it. If you have a tip you wanna share, one you think I should include in a future video, leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. But thanks for your support, I really appreciate it. I'll be back again with more videos like this to help you get the most out of your life. Thanks for watching.